What's going on, guys? Uh, October 30th, 2023. It's Monday. And I've been doing a lot of PM, so I really haven't been getting a whole lot of footage. So today's video is actually um, a call from two separate days. Um, one was actually from Friday, and then one was from today. So um, first up, we have a no cooling call. Take a look. Right. No cooling. Contactors pulled in, but it's not running. First things first, do we got power? Got our meter. Set the voltage. That's the bottom of the contactor. Nothing there. Uh, so let's go from each one to ground. Nothing there. And nothing there. Check this disconnect next. All right. Now, here is our power coming in, our line side. All right, we got a breaker off or tripped or something, so let's go find the breaker. We'll leave this disconnected. Actually, um, we'll see if it's tripped or just off. Just real quick, we'll do a, we'll just test for shorts. Nothing there. Doesn't seem like there's anything there. All right, well, ground to ground, we got it. <laughs> I'm not seeing any shorts, even though that contact has probably seen better days. Um, just a quick, just a quickie sh um, checking for shorts. I don't see anything, so let's go find a breaker. All right, we got. This is for that. This says AC heat. Let's turn that on. See what happens. This is actually one of our competitors' buildings. <laughs> They're just a plumbing company, though. They're, they don't do HVAC. <laughs> It'd be pretty funny if it was just a breaker off. All right, let's go ahead and. So we, well, we tested the wrong side before, but nevertheless, the voltage was off. All right, we got it now, 243. Hmm, that could have been bad for me. But yeah, I, I tested the load side earlier and I should have been testing the line side. All right, <clears throat> now we know we got full power. Let's put this little cover back on. And we'll plug the disconnect back in. I hate these style disconnects anyway. They're so hard to get out. Which is crazy because Square D makes a solid panel. They make crappy disconnects. All right, let's see what happens. No, she sounds like crap. And this looks like it's leaking. But it did start. You could use a cleaning too. I've worked on this unit before. Maybe not the outdoor unit here, but um, there's a blower capacitor or something before it froze up. That actually wasn't that long ago. That might have been the beginning of this summer or maybe last year. Let's get the leak detector out. We'll see if uh, this is actually leaking.
anything out. Not right here, anyway. Definitely feels like, whoa, man, this thing is on there. Weirdly tight. I, I bet you that's got some pressure behind it. I'm almost afraid to take it off. <laughs> Let's see what happens. I've seen them where they're real tight like that. They've got pressure built up behind them. Now the O-ring is just cocked sideways on it. That's definitely been leaking. had been, I don't know, messing up on me. I haven't been grabbing them on the first try. Ah, uh, what have I got myself into now? much pressure behind here though it is r22 but she's not giving me no fight well, i'm not sure where i've seen this i think on hvac school youtube video or something but you take a cap you drill a hole in the middle of it go ahead and put her on Spray that little hole with leak soap. See if your valve core is leaking. And our new one looks good now. So. I'm not going to worry about putting gauges on this. I don't think it really even lost that much. I just noticed that little bit of oil on there. And she could do for some upgrades, that's for sure. On anything made by Carrier Bryant, the second, the first two is the 
week it was manufactured, the third and fourth digit are the year. So this was made in the 47th week of 2000. So this system is 23 years old. I'm not gonna try to sell them a bunch of upgrades on it. I'd rather sell them a new system, but this one's still running, so. I'm not the type of guy and we're not the type of company to sell people stuff they don't need. I'll let them know about it and if they want to make the upgrade they can. If not, then uh, they'll probably run until it drops, honestly. Just notice this, this <laughs> uh, condenser fan only has one screw in it. These other three are missing. Let's see if we can come up with some screws for that. There we go few screws in it that'll hold her a while all right next up uh, I am going back to the call where I did the gas leak test so um, some interesting stuff there that I ran into so take a look all right we're back out here where this gas leak that I fixed the other day I uh, assumed the gas company was uh, happy because they turned our gas on thank God he left my test rig because these get pretty expensive to build and yeah so i talked to him and uh i told him that the one gas valve was bad he said okay cool i'll just leave that off and we're here today to replace that gas valve so let's get up there let's get going all right here we go guys so here's the valve i think that that's that close there so they used a street l and then a little or no, the nipple goes from here into the street L. Okay, well that's not as bad as I thought it was. All right, well, we're gonna break this union. Um, take this pipe off of the street L they use there. I don't know if there's enough room to swing that or not. If there's not, we'll go ahead and just take the manifold off and get that valve out of there. Let's see if we can break her free with just one wrench. Wow, that is tight. Yep, I'm spinning the whole thing. All right, we're gonna have to get another one behind All right, needed two hands on her. This side was spinning to start with, then when I backed this side up, the other side started to spin. But we got her, we got her. Just gotta get this off here now. Really don't like how tight this union still is, but is what it is. We'll We'll test her once we get it all back together. If we got to replace it, we will replace it. And always be careful whenever you're tightening anything down on these regulators. I've split one before. It's very easy to split them if you put too much tension on them. All right. So we want to take this nipple off here. So we're going to grab her right here. Hopefully we can get that spinning. Turning the gas valve. Let's see if we can get that. Come on, baby. Nope. Hmm. What is it actually? I don't know if the whole gas valve moved or just the nipple or the street L moved. We got her moving now. All right, let's unplug this. Yeah, just a single stage valve, guys. Nothing, nothing real special about it. So what we're gonna do now is I'm just gonna take it off the manifold here. So we can get the whole thing out and spin our um, our manifold off. Come out now. Oh, there she is. Half inch street L. 
I might actually see if I got one of them because she don't look too sporty either. Uh, we'll see if we can get her out of there. Right, there's our old valve off. Distribution tube. And then our street L here. Which actually came out really easy because I already had it loose from it um, going downward when I was taking the nipple off. All right, so we're going to put our... Uh, distribution tube um, manifold back on and then we'll uh, put the 90 on all right we got our manifold on we got our street L back on we'll go ahead and put this back in and connect everything or connect the gas line back hmm so this valve is actually a little bit different is it it still sticks off the same. Seems like it's not going in there right. Yeah, maybe it is. Okay. Let's get her locked down. Well, I didn't have her spun around all the way, so I had to put another half quarter turn on her, but she's gas valves in the right spot now these wire and hooked up there we go all right yeah, that's us right there get our get our nipple shoved in there we'll try to clean that dope up all right we're all back together now i gotta run down grab my manometer so we can test the gas pressure when we start this baby back up yeah, this one, I don't know if this valve is longer or what it is, but I can't get this to, to line back up now. You see how it's coming in all off to the side now? Not sure what happened there. I tried to pull it back. This new valve must be a little bit longer or something like that. I can't get that line back up. I'll try to get that fitted back in there best I can. All right, we got the gas back on now. Um, I'm not sure if it has to be bled off because I don't think even that one has been fired since they turned the gas back on. But we're going to test for leaks with this new leak detector I got that Inficon sent me. The Inficon Gas Mate Combustible Gas Detector. So I'm sure you guys have seen this one before. Uh, it looks a whole lot like the TechMate refrigerant leak detector. Uh, same body and all except this one's yellow and it's got a little slide scale on it just like the um, Inficon Whisper has so um, yeah their basic classic design here we'll go ahead and fire it up yep it goes through this long annoying period where it beeps for a while until it's uh it's heated up all right she's on now and ready to go um, we have a slide scale here to adjust the sensitivity. Um, all the way up is the highest sensitivity, or we could keep sliding like this down to there, and that is the lowest sensitivity. All right, we're going to go to the high sensitivity. And let it warm itself back up again. All right. One thing I don't like about it, which I didn't like about the TechMate either, is there is no volume control going to go around we're going to test these fittings here make sure we don't have a leak i think we're good I cracked the um, the inlet pressure point. I just want to hear it go off, see what it sounds like. Oh yeah, good reaction time too. Very cool. All right. I'm still bleeding it off. It actually just kind of smelled I don't know if we have a full column of gas yet, but we're about to find out. 
Good our manometer hooked up. Let me tighten this one down. We'll see if she fires up. All right, she's coming on now. That draft inducer kind of sounds like hell. Took it a minute to start up. A bit high on the gas pressure the first time she's been on this year so i opened this panel just so it can blow out any burnt smell or anything like that it's got and we're going to drop her down to 3.5 We're in good shape with this one now this one i don't think the heat has been fired up yet on however another contractor apparently looked at the air conditioning on this one and said it had a well if i'm quoting them it said they have a coil that what, what did they say a ruptured coil or a coil exploded or something like that so we're gonna look and see what they saw just to confirm that, and don't ask me how two HVAC contractors got mixed up with the same unit around the same time. I think it's more of like a, the tenant uses us, but the landlord uses someone else type deal. All right. I don't see any signs of anything crazy leaking. Doesn't mean they might have a hole in the coil, but it does at least have some refrigerant pressure behind it. I pressed in this valve here and I heard refrigerant. So, didn't seem like a whole lot behind it though. I wonder if this is R22 though. Chances are when you can't read the panel, it's R22. Let's see if we can see it on the compressor. She's got mineral oil, so it's going to be R22. They didn't do anything to disable it, though, if it did have a leaky coil. I don't know. Let's fire it up, see what happens. All right, just to confirm, we have a call. We do have a call on Y, or we don't have a call on Y. So let's go ahead and jump. It's taking that condenser motor a long time to get going. Do we have a low ambient control? We do. Okay, so we do have a low ambient control right there. So that makes sense. You put, place this panel over here. There she go. She's got plenty of head pressure or pl making plenty of heat. I don't know, I think these guys might be getting out trying to get one over on them. That's very cold. it was this one i don't know they said one of the units had a ruptured coil i'm firing this one up to see if this one fires well, the heat fired right up on this one so good there well this one this air conditioner is working it's not working as well as that one is but i swear when i was here the other day doing that gas pressure test the property manager guy came by here and he told me they had quotes in to replace this unit because he asked me which one the gas valve was bad on and i said this one and he said okay well that one's staying anyway he said i got bids in to change that unit there i said all right i mean whatever i just assumed he was telling the truth but 
I'm not going to put gauges on it or anything because that's not uh, that's not what I'm here to do today. But as far as I can tell, this air conditioner is running fine. And if anything, this one might be a little low on refrigerant. But it's still running, you know, decently. When you tell a customer you've got a ruptured coil, I'm going to find out what the actual word they used. But that sounds like something blew up blew a hole out of her or something i'm not seeing anything like that here i'm not here to deny anybody their their money if, if they want to sell them a unit sell them a unit but don't lie to them i'm going to make sure you're not going to lie to them like i said if you want to sell them a unit be proactive these units are old i mean don't get me wrong they are old and they probably do need to be replaced but you're telling a customer they got a ruptured coil you know that's that, that's a scare tactic so so yeah guys uh i mean i'm not here to deny anybody their living if you want to try to sell units go ahead and sell units but uh but don't lie to a customer don't tell them they have a ruptured coil when they really don't um from what i can see i don't even know if these guys are full-time maintenance or full-time hvac guys i think they might just be maintenance guys but um, but yeah, I didn't see any evidence of a ruptured coil. Now, if that unit does get replaced, it's not going to be on the tenant. It's going to be on the landlord. So, and the tenant is my customer. The landlord is their customer. So, um, my customer will not be responsible for the unit. So at least my customer is not getting screwed over if these, if this company is lying to them. So that's a good thing, but but yeah, you got to be careful out there. Any of uh, any homeowners or um, or consumers out there um, that watch my channel, you know, ask for evidence of stuff. There's nothing wrong with asking for for pictures um, and stuff like that, and and time stamped or GPS stamped pictures. And there's nothing wrong with asking for that evidence. Like if someone says you have a, a hole in your heat exchanger, okay. I have a hole in my heat exchanger. Would you mind showing me the picture? Would you mind me coming down in the basement or um, or showing me a timestamp, GPS stamp picture of this hole? Um, there's nothing wrong with asking for that stuff. You know, you got to cover yourself and you got to protect your you got to protect your your investments. So, uh, all right, guys, that's going to be it for this one. I'm not here to bash any companies. I'm not gonna. I'm not doing all that. I, I just don't like to see people get lied to but that's going to be it for this one so go ahead and hit the thumbs up if you like the video and subscribe if you're new here um so in the coming days i'm going to do a giveaway so uh, i got sent that new um combustible gas leak detector by uh inficon and so i don't really need this one now so i'm going to give this one away in the coming days so stay tuned maybe tomorrow or the next day i'm going to tell you how to win that one um and we'll give it away so um, it's, it's a good one. I mean, I found I found a couple leaks with that one. Very good uh, leak detector. It's just um, I have this other one now that I'm going to be testing out for a while. And if I get another one soon, I'll probably give the Inficon one away, the uh, the gas mate, which that's a really good leak detector. So I'll probably hold on to that one for a while. Um, but yeah, there's nothing wrong with that one. Very good leak detector. I've used it. I reviewed it. Um, check back in my feed and, I, and you should be able to, to, to find the review on that. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll give it away. So, all right, guys. So don't forget to hit the thumbs up and subscribe and uh, check the, the site notes, the site notes, <laughs> that's on my iPad. Uh, check the, um, uh, the description. I have a bunch of products down there. Uh, if you click on one, if you buy anything, I get a small commission. It's a great way to support the channel. And um, also if you feel like donating, I have uh, all my cash tags, cash app, PayPal, Venmo, all that's down in the description. So if you want to leave a donation, that's great too. Really helps me out. All right, guys, catch you on the next one.